Hello everyone and welcome, this is Common and Cam and today I'm going to be reviewing Voltron Legendary Defender Season 7. It's finally here and I've just got to say right off the bat, this has got to be one of my favourite seasons of this series. It just is. I thought the last series was great, this just improves it. This is a far more emotional one in my opinion. It really hooked me in, it really got me tear it up and it made me hate characters but then love them as well um, I'm going to explain that um, in a bit but I'm going to talk about these episodes in order I'm going to talk about the main vocal points of the 13 episodes it's not 6 this time it's a full on 13 which is fantastic this show has really proven that with creative writing you can take the show almost anywhere and with 7 seasons that's really fantastic to keep up the quality going for that long. Now with what happened in season 6 with Shiro, the whole clone aspect, how will that be dealt with in this season? And well, it's touched on but not so much in detail as I would like to have hoped. But then again it kind of wraps it up enough for us to continue with the season. Um, which is kind of a good thing, you know, we, we kind of can leave it to our own imagination and how we sort of interpret it. You know, it's a, it's a clone body but with his consciousness in it so... With the clone being exact as the original Shiro body, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much how it is. There's no sort of controlling effects of clone Shiro being warped. I mean, it is disappointing that the clone Shiro has kind of just gone, though his memories are in sync. So how the writers are kind of just trying to save us is that the original Shiro we got um, and the clone Shiro, they're basically exact the same in terms of the memories they're going to be linked in one personality which it doesn't set well with some fans because they want to treat clone Shiro as his own entity you know because he created this uh, relationship this new relationship with the paladins and that and it is interpreted very differently I don't, I don't know I don't really want to dive into it too much and throughout the entire episode it's very uncertain actually if he's actually going to wake up at all and we've got Keith over him just like really upset and just pushing him to try and um, get back like just saying to him you know he's obviously he's unconscious but he's just trying to get his message out to him and we get a few interesting flashbacks and a lot of these flashbacks actually do play a part in the in the future episodes with characters that are introduced in that past i really do like the keith and Shira relationship they really do keep the mentality of a big brother situation you know you can't really really say father figure because keith did have a father and although you know he sadly passed away in that um shiro is certainly the, the figure that was in his life next and while it kind of just turned more into this big brother style and I, I really do love this relationship I really do feel their connection and I think it worked out well though I do feel how he woke up was a little bit oh you know I thought it was going to be more prolonged like it's going to be oh maybe two episodes that will still have him unconscious but no he wakes up with a bang and then it moves on episode two it's a really fun one i really do like how lance sorted out the paladins because they were trying to figure out who should be with who in each in each of the lions and i really do like how lance sorted himself with romel deliberately and everyone else is sort of like really frustrated on who they're partnering up with and lance is just with romel and um, she's nice i really do like her character she's another altean and um, she kind of is a distraction a little bit of the whole lance and allura situation because we know how people really want them two to get together but with the season as it's gone and they've been seen more as friends, Romel is that kind of opposite and it's kind of funny because it's like the female version of Lance and they kind of do have a lot of, I mean they do bump heads sometimes which is good because they are exactly alike and you know with similar personalities they're going to bump heads on certain things. But the, in a later episode, it, it kind of shuts down that entire theory, um, and him and Laura are kind of back at it with each other again. It's very it's very glimpsed over, but I don't know, I would have liked the idea of Lance being sorted out with Romel better. And well, let's just talk about love for a little bit. There's so much love going off in this series. There's a lot of sort of overshadowing and sort of like little touches to certain characters, which I think are pretty neat, and I actually got on board with most of what we were trying to do. I'll talk about that in a few other episodes with certain other characters, but one last thing about episode two is that I like to have a go have become less predictable and they actually, you know, did different tactics than what they usually are like with one solid leader. Because uh, as we know, the Gara have separated now. And another touching moment I liked with Lance and Keith because a lot of people have been upset that their uh, brother like relationship hasn't been done a lot more. I know a lot of people prefer to ship them. Um, I'm not really a part of that, unfortunately. I kind of just see them as good brothers, uh, you know, just solid best mates. But I did like how um, Lance called Keith a team leader. So it really does show how their relationship has uh, really developed um, as friends and like as I see him as brothers. <laughs> Sorry guys, I know you're going to tap me in the comments for saying that, but 
I'm sorry, but let the writers write what they want to write. <laughs> you know, I see them more as brothers. What I was saying about love and relationships, Coralia, I kind of thought her and Shiro was having a bit of a relationship. She was very touching over Shiro, but I don't think that's necessarily the case. I thought that's what they were going to imply, is that Keith's uh, mother and uh, Shiro would become an item, which I thought might have been a bit weird for Keith. So uh, I kind of hope, I'm kind of glad that didn't actually end up where it was, just for the sake of Keith probably being a bit awkward about that. As I say, with this series, there's a lot of things that, oh, is that what they're trying to imply? But then it kind of goes away a little bit, but then it comes back in future episodes. So, to, so it can be a bit of a hit and miss sometimes. Moving on to episode 3, the Paladins are actually captured by Zephyrid and Ezor. But yeah, no exit effects, and it turns out a lot of years has passed since the battle between Lotar and Voltron. And one thing I just love in this, because I felt like this from the very beginning that these characters interacted with each other, but the whole going on back to the love aspect, we've got Keith and Exa becoming kind of an item, you know, it's kind of touched on a little bit when Zephyrid and Edsor talks about, oh, you always cared for the floppy-haired one. You know, she has a bit of a soft spot for that one, which I, I like, you know, I like that. I think them two are a really good match. I love how them two are kind of acting like shy about it when they sort of confront him about it. And they're like, can we just fight? Because obviously they're not ready to deal with that yet. And um, there's a part where she kind of vanishes a little bit. Exa, I, I, I was really disappointed for me because I thought she was going to join the team after they get out of the whole situation with Zephyr and Edso. Turns out she just disappears, but she comes at the very end, which is a very good thing because I really like them two as characters. I know I don't want to get into the whole Keith being gay debate, you know, fans really want that idea, fans really don't. At the end of the day, guys, I'm just saying, let the writers write what they want to write, and if, if, if that's what they're implying, then let them do it, because you might actually really enjoy it. I don't know, guys, it's, that one's a very, very sticky debate, because I know a lot of people have a lot of hard feelings on that, but, uh, I don't know, I just like the, I just like the idea. I'm not one for really shipping characters, I, I'd let the writers just write what they want to write out, and see how it plays out, and so far, I'm loving them too, so I hope we get to see more of them in the next season. Moving on to episode four, it's kind of a silly one. We kind of, it's a bit of, a, it's the only fun episode we get to have, uh, but still is integrated into the plot, though you could kind of miss this one out, but it's still a fun one, it's one of those side episodes which is no harm in watching at all, and we've got Bob, this character who gets the paladins into this game show, and it turns out in the end that he's this big intellectual knowledge guy, like if you actually um, get past one of his tests, it means you are destined for great things, so just another meaningful episode to show how important these um, the paladins are, and Voltron and everything, which I thought was pretty neat. In episode 5, we've got Keith first in Medesis. He's a character that's been in the part of it before. He basically tricks the Voltron team into um, coming to this planet, and he has Kovian held hostage, and that's part of the episode where Keith's mother, she kind of goes away to help him out and rebuild the resistance that they had. In episode 6, the gang gets lost in space. Now this episode was a really weird one, and um, it's basically this big elusive monster that they come across, and Keith says a lot of hard words to the cast, like this is where Keith becomes really brutal with the team, but it gets all resolved obviously, and they, they, they get back into their lines and they head to Earth, which I want to talk about the next uh, few episodes, episode 7 and 8, The Last Stand, by far my favourite episodes um, in this series, really a standout one, mainly because of the reason it doesn't include the Voltron cast, we get a lot of new characters in this episode, it's three years before they get the distress signal from Earth when they figure it out at the end of episode 6, episode 7 and 8 is showing you what happened to Earth and how it led up to them being prepared, or are they prepared? Well, it turns out they are. We've got Pidge's father, Sam Holt. He actually informs them all of what's happening, and I just like that whole aspect in general, just them informing on what's actually going on. And we do get a lot of new characters, and I'm gonna talk about this in a different video, so I don't wanna get into it too much here. They are called as the MFEs. They are these group of young kids who are the fastest pilots uh, that they have to offer. We've got new characters, Kincaid, Left Stutter, Griffin, Veronica, which is actually Lance's sister. There's another one as well, I know there is, I just forgot it, I apologise. But them lot, I'm going to talk about them in a separate video because I would really, really love to see a spin-off with them. I don't think it's a situation where they're going to become the new paladins of Voltron because we know, unfortunately, that this series is coming to a close very soon. I think season 8 is going to be the last season. 
I'm not saying that that's going to be the case. I'm going to talk about that completely separate. But these characters are really standouts. They're not just lazy characters. They actually do invoke a lot into the story. And I liked their build up. And Griffin is actually a part of Keith's past. Which is a little bit of headbutts in future episodes. That we come across each other. Um, but yeah I'm going to talk about that um, in a different video. Because I really do like um, that group of kids. I think they were really interesting. And I actually, it was actually really upsetting for me. When I thought Veronica died. But she actually didn't. She came back which was so good because she was a well-written character i really wanted to see more of her and i actually got really upset about her. i thought oh she, is she dead oh did she die with a train no she's alive so that's all well and good oh and it also turns out that this earth in the years that it's set in it's had a world war three so i thought that was pretty interesting um episode nine griffin and keith yep as i was saying before they're old rivals that's one of the notes i had on because that's emphasized a little bit more in that and griffin is a little bit of a hit and miss character for me i didn't like the way how he was talking to hunk at the beginning when he was talking about how he wants to see his family and everything like that um but then he helps him how actually locate his uh his family because uh after of all the families um hunk is missing his family the most we see lance and his family and page but hunk is really broken up about that so Griffin goes out and helps him. But yeah, um, episode 10 though, we talk about Shiro. He's got a new arm. Now I will admit, I don't like how the arm kind of played out at first. It's grown on me now, but I would have liked to have just been a full on arm. Not just a hovering one like Sandek kind of has. I mean, it works for Sandek, but for Shiro, I was like, ah, all right. And throughout that episode, they get the Lions to Earth to make a counterattack against the Goro Empire because they have absolutely destroyed half of planet earth which was really heartbreak of it because i don't know why obviously for other planets they've attacked it's it's still impactful but with earth being so personal to us i was like oh god okay because i can feel like you know with the cities being destroyed with people and everything like that it's actually related to me as a human being it was really really heart-wrenching seeing them go after earth so it was more satisfying when they overthrow them in the end now one annoying thing i hated absolutely hated in the beginning I say this, I hated it in the beginning, but then I really liked it towards the end. Admiral Sander. Now, she basically tries to shut down almost any idea that the opposite team, our heroes, really do like. You know, she's like, no, 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 we can't do this. We've got to do this right. And she became a real, real pain. She believes in protocol to the absolute core, which is absolutely annoying because she's not optimistic enough because she's so well in order. But she, well... She, she rats him out. She basically tells Sandek everything that he could possibly want to know. And, uh, well, surprise, surprise, he doesn't follow up on her side of a bargain to spare Earth. And she gets locked up and it's like, ah, oh, really? I mean, you're an admiral. Like, you should, you should know. You should know your enemies better, you know. And uh, it was very frustrating, very, very frustrating. But obviously, it, it's a part of a plot. It's how, it's, how it was structured. And uh, I, I thought, that's it. I hate her. That's it. She's done. But, God, the writers of Voltron are really great because I loved her in the end. The way how she sacrificed herself, the way how she got out of there to free the other paladins because they were a new thing aspect in the show that they did is actually have them control the lions without being in the lions. And while they were doing that, they were obviously discovered what they were doing they're going to go attack her but um, but sander she she's fighting them off and unfortunately she dies and i actually had a tear in my eye because i was like oh god damn it she becomes such an amazing character and then she dies and the one thing she says to keith what really hit me was what was it? it was along the lines of like do what i couldn't save earth and i'm like all right i'm done i need to take a break i'm getting food now Absolutely amazing. I really did like her character. You know, I hated her to begin with because of how narrow she was and, and you know and stupid in her thought process. But she became such a great character and certainly one of the most memorable characters now from the from the season, in my opinion. Now we've got the final final episode. One hell of a finale. It was absolutely amazing. I'm just going to round it off on notes in the order of the episode. So Sandek, he has a massive fight with Shiro. Shiro is going after the crystal because they're getting really grounded now and he basically goes out to get the crystal while the paladins are trying to stop it from destroying earth and he goes after it and it's like one of those moments again where like Shiro, Shiro be careful now we don't want you to die again and uh, I, one thing I loved in this show when they were, when um, when he was going up against Sandek when they were fighting, um, great choreography in that fight but one thing I just absolutely loved is the soundtrack that was played because it's the exact same soundtrack from Keith and Shiro's battle and I love that soundtrack to bits, I've listened to that now 
God knows how many times, but that was playing during his fight with Sandek and when the ships were crashing down to Earth. And I was like, okay, yeah, this is good. Like, this is good. This music, revisiting this again, absolutely amazing. I'm glad they reused that music because it's such a great piece of music. One of the best soundtracks I've heard in a long time, actually, in a TV show. So that's really good. Props to them for that. Um, at first, uh, after, well, after all that's said and done, he gets defeated and you think, that's it, right? That's the end of the day. Well, no, that's, that's not the case when it comes to the Voltron Riders. They think, okay, this is it. It's done now. And then the next big thing happens, and well, I thought Lotor was back, but it's not Lotor, it actually turns out to be another Altaian, which we discover at the end, we don't know who that is quite yet, and um, it's probably a character we've seen in a flashback, but I, I just couldn't remember, um, but that appears out of nowhere, you know, starts attacking them, and um, they find a weak spot though, but it, it's really, really tough to defeat, really, really tough. Uh, it's one hell of a design as well, I really do like that. I love how they've taken so many design aspects from Zone the Enders, it's absolutely fantastic but um one another shocker you think oh so this big thing's just come out of nowhere what are we gonna do next well shiro basically gets the entire power from that crystal and transforms atlas the new ship they have into a giant robot <laughs> it's like okay and i i thought it was kind of as i don't know why i thought this because obviously i should have known the ship was way bigger but it's absolutely gigantic compared to um the enemy they are defeating um and that actually forms as well with the dark energy it has and tries to up its size but it's all right because in the end it finally gets defeated everything's all clear and uh that's it that's kind of the end close of the show uh yeah, it's re really fantastic show how they settled those final two episodes um as i said my favorite episode is obviously the last stand the whole prequel episode but still overall what a great season like really fantastic you know season eight presumably is going to be the last and the cast said at comic-con that they have their last episode sort of set which is unfortunate and uh one hell of a wait for next year because i think it'll pretty much be next year um but damn like it's hard to imagine that this is almost over but still i'm glad they came to earth and there's still a lot more to tell you know haggard's still out there i think she'll be the last big threat and obviously the sartain that we've got at the end they're not done just yet guys so uh the wait is still eager but i'm in no rush at the same time because wow like damn i don't really want this show to end but i'm going to talk about in another episode about how i feel about the um the mfes and how the continuity of this legendary defender series could still continue through them obviously that's going to be a very mixed uh video and some people i can imagine but still i'm going to talk about in the next one but this series this season one of my best like this is actually my favorite season i i hope in the next season i don't say that but i, I feel like every time they keep improving so many times and it's uh really fantastic I, there's a few gripes i've shared obviously but uh still either way this show is absolutely perfect i uh, i really did enjoy it and it's sad that it's over already but that's the hype of these shows you know you gotta watch them all in one but uh, yeah guys let me know what you think in the comment section below to uh season seven if you've watched it already i know it's just come out today but uh i had to watch it as soon as possible so i hope you've done the same and uh yeah let me know what you think in the comment section below if you've enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe because i do a lot of voltron content now i'm glad that this has kind of become more of a thing i really like this series so it's good that the reception is doing so well for it so don't worry guys more voltron videos to come in the future to talk about a lot of things within season seven so uh, stay tuned for that. But uh, yeah, this has been Common and Cam. And until the next video, guys, goodbye.